Greetings, Kerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is The Gateway Project, episode number five, where we're going to send crew up to the Kerbin Space Station and start doing some EVA construction and using Kerbal attachment and robotics and all kinds of really cool stuff. But first, I have news. Bob Kerman has been found! Woohoo! So apparently he was able to get into the escape vehicle uh, because they had docked up there with a crew transfer vehicle. He was able to get in there and escape just in time before the station went up in flames and explosions all around him. Uh, the reason why we couldn't find him is he had come down in some mountains and we didn't know where he was and he had no, lost his communications on his ship, everything was pretty much destroyed, so he just had a hard time getting back in contact with us. But we finally tracked him down uh, with this beacon that he was able to get going, and so he's safe. Now, if you remember, in the last episode, we had this going on, and this maybe didn't make much sense. Well, this is one of Joseph Kerman's minions. He is a spy and saboteur and responsible for what happened to our space station. So we are giving him a trip to the alternate dimension without needing to wait for the construction of the Gateway Project to be finished. And here's how we do that. If we catch anybody else trying to sabotage our launches for the KSS, they are going to find a similar fate. Also, in the last episode, I did a quick recap of the launches. I didn't really go into any details or anything. I just basically showed that I had relaunched all of the first four modules and redocked them up and everything again. Well, all of the storytelling aside, the real reason I did all of that is I've learned a few more lessons, especially about how to do the part welding and some things about how to try to keep my part count down even lower because I was already starting to get lag and I think I know why uh, but I'll get into that in a minute so yeah for a handful of reasons I decided I would deorbit uh, the first version or second version of the KSS and go for version 3 with even more changes and lessons learned to make it even better and truth be told Deorbiting anything, especially something big like that with deadly re-entry in Kerbal Space Program, is just kind of fun. Now, if you're interested in any of the little changes that I put into the four parts that we sent up in the other episodes, and you would like to see what changes I've made uh, before sending them up again this second, third time, uh, I'm going to put a link to a separate video that you can go and look at that and see all the little differences. But in this one, we are just going to go straight into launching up our crew. In our dimension, the first crew went up in October of the year 2000. Uh, that was uh, Bill, Sergey, and Yuri, if I remember correctly. Let's take a quick look back at the rigorous selection process here on Kerbin. Bob Kerman is going up because he is demanding to do all of the construction on the station and we should also send up our smarter engineers who are going to be Al D. Kerman and Phil Me Kerman. Alright, awesome. So you guys are heading up, uh, let's get going. Yep, very rigorous selection criteria right there. So back here we have the Hydra crew transfer vehicle releasing its shroud on the escape system up there and exposing the solar panels with those deployed side fairings there. And we'll bring those solar panels out, sucking in that wonderful nectar from the sun, drop the fairing that covers up the engine and protects it, and then we'll throttle up and head ourselves up to the KSS. I waited until our uh, mission control was directly under the orbit for the KSS to reduce the amount of fuel that it was going to take. So you can see here where I'm trying to get my apoapsis up to meet the opposing orbit, but at the same time also trying to keep my ascending or descending node, whichever it happened to be there at the time, uh, matched up also to conserve fuel because I only have enough on this to get us into orbit, reach the KSS, 
and do the rendezvous. I don't really want to spend a whole lot doing unnecessary inclination changes. Unfortunately, what that meant is I had to wait like five or six orbits in order to get into the right position to make my transfer. Uh, but once I did, uh, it was all good, smooth sailing. Right here, I'm using a little trick with my Smart ASS. What I do is I hit target plus, and that forces the nose of the craft to point toward whatever it is that's my target, which allows me to find it. Because, you know, sometimes it's really hard to find those things that are just these little tiny blips off in the middle of nowhere. And then after that, I hit target relative velocity minus, which will allow me to switch to my retro vector relative to the target. And now, if I alternate in between target uh, plus and relative velocity minus, then it allows me to uh, home in on the target easier with the least fuel. So here, we're releasing our injection stage and deploying its solar panels so that we don't run out of power before we get a chance to switch back to it and deorbit. And there we have a nice view of the docking port I'm connecting to. I have a camera on the front of that crew transfer vehicle. And uh, I'll show that in the vehicle assembly building, actually. So moving our way up, I'm just going to skip past most of this. You've seen all of this kind of stuff before. Uh, let's see. So I'll show you what it looks like here in its decoupled form. Actually, I'm going to start at the top on this. I have in the abort section, I have a few groups here. We have our uh, custom one and custom two to do some of the deployment, but I also have abort and uh, that's when you press the backspace key. It will activate your abort action group and that will activate this tower as well as at the same time decouple this decoupler right here, which would then make the capsule, which is underneath here, fly away. Uh, so on here I have the KSPX escape tower and the SDHI mod uh, shroud, which goes over the MK12 capsule, and that in turn attaches to the real shoot modded docking node that has both drogue shoots and main shoots. I have on here a hull camera that points up at where I'm going to be docking, and just a couple surface lights. Before continuing on with the description, let's show what that escape system looks like. So I'm intentionally going to throw this rocket off course, allowing our test subjects here to demonstrate the escape launch capabilities by intentionally blowing off one of the booster rockets and let's say something goes wrong. So you just hit the backspace key and that capsule flies off and then you just start hitting spacebar, going through the different stages, taking the shroud away, and then eventually heading down into the parachute. Or you can just reach out there, I suppose, and grab the parachute by hand. Uh, but if the staging is all set up to come back normally, then it should also eventually be in there that you can just hit that and uh, your guys will come down nice, safe, and sound. In fact, this real shoot mod is really cool because you can actually go through warp speed with your shoots open and they do not rip off of your ship. You can keep it at four times warp acceleration, physical acceleration, and your guys will come down. Awesome. So let's head back and look at the rocket some more. When it's flying around uh, trying to meet up with the space station it's actually going to look more like this with those solar panels deployed. This is two sections together at the same time. There is a bottom section which decouples here at this decoupler and this is my injection stage and then up here I have my crew capsule and my compartment where I can store some goods. So I have Kerbal Attachment Container Holder things there, which you can open up to put stuff inside and bring up extra cargo at the same time that I'm sending up the crew vehicle. Uh, so those are just the little compartments. Uh, there are big ones as well, but this is not my cargo carrier, this is my crew carrier. So I have a different version of the Hydra for carrying cargo. I can show that, I suppose, but I'm not going to show that right now. 
So down here at the bottom, when this finishes its injection and decouples, I want to be able to deorbit it because it's doing most of the work to get up into orbit. So hidden away inside this capsule compartment here, I have some monopropellant for the RCS blocks right there that I got from B9. And we have the CPU so I can control it, some batteries to last just long enough to be able to deorbit, and a gyro for just that little extra touch uh, of maneuverability on top of the RCS components. And that's it there, just uh, to make sure it doesn't run out of power while it's trying to deorbit, which it probably wouldn't, but I put some solar panels on here anyway. And that's it, yeah, just uh, engines and fuel, fuel and that. Okay, so when this is gone, then we just have our part that's going to be attached to the station. And there's no telling how long it's going to be attached to the station. But once it finally does decouple and head back, then it takes advantage of a couple of things in here. Oh, uh, notice I have an antenna hidden in there. And when these sides pop off, then the antenna comes out and uh, sticks out through there. It's the 5 million meter antenna. And if I mount it up in this area, it actually pokes through the side and I have to make it go sideways and do weird things with it. And I didn't want to do that. So I stuck it down in there and that gave it the extra space. So anyway, when it does decouple and it wants to head back, it's going to take advantage of some other things that are hidden in here. Uh, the RCS block from B9 and some AIES engines, which I had to tilt and make them point up over the edge of this because I wasn't getting any thrust when they were in here pointing down at it. I tried mounting them in here, but this didn't have cross feed on the fuel, so it wasn't getting the fuel down. I tried mounting them uh, on, oh, close that, on the RCS right in there, and it was being blocked by these canisters, which could still be there because the intent is that trash would get loaded up into this and then when it comes back in it's going to deorbit and this seg segment here is going to burn up and explode on re-entry. Uh, but before we get to that, one of the things that I've done, this is the Cosmos Pack Salyu Solar Array and I have modded that to be a little bit smaller to make it fit in here. Uh, what I could do, I suppose, is I'll throw up the code that I did that with. I use a thing called Module Manager, and that mod allows you to basically mod all the other parts and mods uh, and to override values that they have provided with your own values. Okay, so I lights on that and oh boy, that happens all the time. I'm trying to move around and I right click on that and it opens it up. So here we have the SDHI mod. It's the one that was allowing me to put these little shroud segments on the side right here, which covers up the innards until it's up in space. I really like that. Uh, the real dragon has special compartments for the solar panels. I have no such compartments, but I do have this, which is actually an Orion uh, at its core. I mean, this idea of putting these on like this and then having them come off and the stuff inside, that's actually an Orion concept. So like I said, this thing is a mixture of all different types of spacecraft all in one and ultimately is my own thing and that's why it's called the Hydra. So this Orion, service module up in here which normally there's an engine attached to the bottom but i didn't attach an engine because i wanted to have this compartment down here this is a mixture of fuel monopropellant uh, a fuel cell so that you can gain extra electricity by burning your liquid fuel and oxidizer if you still have any left and then ultimately undocks revealing the heat shielded capsule which will return and that is it so we will head back up to our station where the capsule you have just seen is now successfully docked to the back of the zvezda module and that allows me to tab over here to the uh, injection phase 
stage, injection stage. And I can do turn that around using its little antenna it's got inside there. It's still connected to the KSS itself. I do a little retro burn uh, real quick, and now that thing is on its way down to deorbit, removing another piece of what would otherwise be orbital debris, which we can send down and just destroy in the atmosphere. Hmm, this gives me an idea. Maybe the next time I catch a saboteur, I can put a little command seat in that compartment and have him sit in there. Before the first EVA construction can begin, we need to let Bob out and have him take a little look around, look for any damage that may have been caused by some of the launches, uh, perhaps look for sabotage damage, although I think our security is pretty strong right now. We should be good. So we'll just do a little flyby of the outside of the station and check for anything that needs to be fixed that isn't on the mission plan. Uh, I do have a mission plan. I went through the ISS's actual EVA list. Uh, there's a wiki online that has every single EVA that's ever been done and what they did on every single one of those EVAs. And I have taken that list and I've converted it into something that will allow me to do um, a, a condensed version, but you know, Kerbal type stuff, going out and doing robotic stuff or connecting this and disconnecting that, running pipes and a few things, you know, just stuff that's going to make it kind of fun. A few of the items that I need are down on the other end of the station there in my Hydra crew transfer vehicle in those compartments. Uh, in fact, let's take a quick look back at me deciding what I was going to put in there. So I'm going to just start filling these up and uh, just fast forward through this section here while, while I put the items in here that I'm going to need. Meh, on second thought, it probably would have been boring to watch that entire process. So let's just go back out here. This is where it's fun. This is the cool stuff. Flying around the outside of that station. Station. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. I am telling you folks, this is why I love this game. Getting to build this and put it up and dock it all together, the satisfaction of having done that, it is 100 million times what I w imagined I could be doing when I was a kid, just like building all this stuff with the Legos and playing in my mind, and now I get to do it for real in Kerbal Space Program. This is fun. In the next episode, we're going to do some EVA construction, and I will see you later, Kerbonauts.